Hello there. I'm continuing my analysis of my most recent channeled video, Blue Star Solstice 2016, Memory Complex Codes, Royal Houses of Sirius, Pleiades and Lyra. So the next part of the channeled writing, channeled material, is at this time, in your month of November, in your year of 2016, the awareness and memories at the cellular level of the royal houses of Sirius, Pleiades and Lyra come online with clarity and emotional connection. So that's sort of self-explanatory at this time right now. And this particular transmission came in in November this year, 2016. The awareness, the knowing, the memories, so we're, we're thinking of this awareness in, um, in the sense of having memory at the cellular level. So that is going to be a deep knowing and not so much a memory up here, as in I remember what I did yesterday. It's a deep knowing, as in I have memories of this. Where are they from? I know I have these memories. I have these knowings, this connection of the royal houses of Sirius, Pleiades and Lyra. So we've discussed what the royal houses are, the royal code, the royal line, and what the Sirius, Pleiades and Lyra constellations are in all the other analysis videos, the dimensional level of those, um, the inception points that they are within clarity and emotional connection so clarity as in we have a clear knowing we have a clear vision of this without um confusions and doubts yes there'll be confusion but it isn't confusion in a negative sense it's confusion in a what's going on you know this is new. It's, it's, it's just a confusion as in trying to process this multidimensional information in a linear sense, not confusion that is going to make you feel bad. That's a different kind of confusion. Um, and emotional connection. Your heart is in this. When there's a knowing, your heart is in this. It is a deep love for your inception point and for other um, incarnations a deep love for your inception point will be very very strong a deep love for the pleiades the pleiadian civilization the pleiadian constellation or sirius or lyra or wherever you hear the word that you know is resonant for your inception point when you hear the word home You think not of your earthly dwelling, but of the crystal structures within Syrian, Pleiadian and Lyran landscape. So when you hear the word home as in your true home, your home, where do you belong? Where are you from? If you are a starseed, you are not going to be taken to the place you were born on earth or the place you would like to live on earth or the place that you're living in now. Even though you may have deep connections and you will have deep connections with these places because you will have been guided to these places in your life. This knowing and love for home needs to come within a, within a knowing at the cellular level that opens your heart. If you have a knowing at the cellular level that's making you deeply sad, making you feel very lonely, making you miss home, making you feel completely disconnected to earth, then please go and watch my video on my channel, Going Home, Meeting Your Star Family. And in that video, um, it's channeled, the nine explain how to shift into the knowing of your home and allowing that, that, that knowing to make you feel connected and happy and to bring that energy of home here on earth and to live the energy of true home here on earth. Because if it's making you feel unhappy, miserable, lonely, and just as though this planet is a completely alien place and you want nothing to do with it, this is normal for a starseed to feel. And most starseeds will have gone through this at some point in their life. But if you're on track with the ascension process, you should have gone through this before and by now come to a place Well, there there is no should of, but the energy when it comes to years of now is an acceptance of earth and the bringing the higher dimensional home to earth. 
So you would probably have gone through this, I don't belong here and I don't want to be here and I don't like earth and I miss home dreadfully. You probably will have gone through that in the past, possibly the recent past, and have dealt with it and transmuted it and come to this place of acceptance of earth. If you haven't, that's, that's fine. There is no judgment on where you are. Uh, apologies if I made it sound as though that there is because there isn't go and watch that video going home and meeting your star family that video is there to help you to come into this alignment because the idea is that we're here we incarnated here to bring the Pleiadian energy the Syrian energy the Lyran energy and all the other inception point energies to earth to assist earth to raise her vibration and move forward um when you hear the word home, you think not of your earthly dwelling, but of the crystal structures. And that's important because I'm told that within the Sirius planetary system, the Aedian planetary system and Lyran planetary system and other planetary systems, structures are made of crystal. Uh, this isn't just buildings. There are crystal buildings, but these, these are technologies. These are living crystals that are part of the landscape of the environment that are interacted with in varying degrees and varying types of crystals and these crystals do different things but the crystalline structure is a template that runs throughout the universal grid if you like it's it's um within all planetary systems and that's what's happening to earth we're becoming a crystalline structure the crystal structures are um, networks of energy and they can be directed by actual crystals that we know actual uh, mineral rock type crystals but the crystalline structure is more of an energy field which is what we're building here yet sometimes they are and in many cases they are actual crystals and in our memory even if it's a crystalline grid that we that we hold in our knowing, we may perceive that as a crystal building, a crystal palace, trees made of crystal. So that's literal and metaphoric as well, depending on the planetary system that you're remembering. It doesn't really matter whether it's literal or metaphoric. The point is, the crystal structure, the crystalline grid, even if you don't know what that is, Holding the knowing of that is going to accelerate your own crystalline matrix awareness. It's going to help that aspect of you come online. So if you actually sit there and say, I am a crystalline matrix and I know I am a crystalline matrix and I'm connected to the universal and cosmic and planetary crystalline network, this will assist you in coming online. Um, it's amazing how it happens actually and to go away and be aware of that crystalline structure is very powerful and most um, advised most um, suggested to do this at this time especially so moving on to the next part the connection to your extraterrestrial planetary inception points which we know what they are discussed that are a predominant part of the celestial aspect of the ascension process. So the celestial aspect is this awareness, this connection to the higher memory, the higher system, the higher chakras. This is the energetic aspect of you moving out and out into an expanded state, coming to the position of the stars, if you like. This is metaphoric and literal. Yet as we expand outwards into the cosmos, we activate within. For there is a universe within us with stars and suns and a galactic core. So we can go inward and outward. They're both the same place from the perspective of the nine. The inner world within your body and the outer world within your solar system is the same place from the perspective of the nine. The connection to your extraterrestrial planetary inception points are a predominant part of the celestial aspect of the ascension process. The imagery you hold within your hyperspace realities are the cellular memories coming to the fore as the DNA activates at this level. The imagery you hold 
within your hyperspace realities. So my hyperspace reality, when I think of a fifth dimensional scene, I'm seeing trees, I'm seeing a beautiful green meadow, I'm seeing unicorns in the distance, this sort of thing. These are my cellular memories coming to the fore. So does this mean that there are worlds where there are forests and beautiful trees and green grass and unicorns in the distance? Yes and no. Yes, because everything you can imagine and even think of and picture in your mind exists because the virtue of you thinking it creates it and yet it has to have been created before you can even think it because your thought and the that which you think of are the same thing so in that respect yes it exists it doesn't exist literally in exactly the way that we see it as i said a crystalline matrix we may see that as a giant crystal so um, a field with a unicorn may represent a field of energy with a, a, a with a christ consciousness purity energetic at the end it depends on which dimensional seen uh and how we are interpreting those metaphors um so the imagery you hold within your hyperspace realities are the cellular memories coming to the fore so we're remembering energetics we're remembering consciousness we are remembering before we were human or after we're human we're remembering not having a body we are remembering remembering being consciousness being um a place a group of beings we're remembering all these things and our our visuals present as triggers to our memory and those visuals are our memory as the dna activates at this level and this is a celestial aspect on a global level you personally may be remembering higher than the celestial aspect but generally on a global level for now in this linear time period we are awakening to the celestial star memory imagery created by you unbidden or conscious both act as triggers to the celestial level of awakening so imagery created by you unbidden or conscious so unbidden as in imagery just comes to you you haven't even thought of it why am i thinking of um a beautiful blue owl flying across uh, a pink sky with three moons why <laughs> you know this is um imagery created by you unbidden or conscious is i am now going to imagine a blue owl flying across a pink sky with three moons and as i'm saying this i'm sure you're thinking about it that's conscious they both act as triggers to the celestial levels of awakening this is the expansion into the metaphor and the literal chakra connection within the star celestial memory going outwards into the cosmos and inwards into the uh, the microcosm, the, the inner cellular structure within the DNA. Imagery created by you, unbidden or conscious, act as triggers to the celestial level of awakening. So if I were to say to you, um, imagine, imagine you are standing on a crystal rock, you're looking upwards and golden um, stars are falling down upon you that acts as a trigger to the celestial levels of awakening why because gold is synonymous with the alchemy with the um emotion of bliss with the frequency of bliss so there's an alchemizing energy going on within you when you think of gold coming your way um and that's just one example we would deliver to you now the keys codes and triggers through the poetic presentation or through the dream weaver's web the dream weaver as the storyteller and the web as the story so the nine are saying we're delivering to you now keys codes and triggers so they're delivering to you some imagery a picture words that would create an imagery within you through the poetic presentation so they're using prose as a poetic structure a poem if you like 
or through the dream weaver's web. The dream weaver is he or she who goes to sleep and weaves the dream, creates a dream because as you think of something, you create it, yet something has to exist for you to think about it. It's one and the same. So that which you think of and the thought itself is the same thing and thought itself is a living consciousness. So you're connecting with living consciousness when you have these thoughts. So the dream weaver is someone who weaves the dream, somebody who creates the structure for you to um, receive. So individuals writing fiction that is high level and creating um, worlds that that act uh, as activation triggers. We're looking at artists that are painting pictures that act as triggers. Uh, we're looking at musicians that create music that act as triggers coming in through sound. All of this creates imagery for that which you think of, creates that which you are thinking of, yet that which you are thinking of already existed for you to be able to think of it. It is a living structure. So you are connecting with living structures when the imagination starts to see these visual fields through sound, through visuals, through feeling, through smell. There are many senses that can trigger these keys, codes, and triggers, and obviously the nine work with words through me. Through the poetic presentation or through the dream weaver's web. So this is the dream weaver, he or she who weaves the dream. The dream weaver as the storyteller. The dream weaver is the storyteller. The dream weaver is he or she who tells the story, whether it's through writing, through words, through picture, through sound, whatever it's through. The dream weaver is he or she who weaves the web, the web being the story. But it's more than a story. The web is the thought. And the thought is that which activates you for the thought is alive. So through these presentations of the language of light, so the language of light is this language, this metaphoric um, symbolism, but it's actually a frequency. The language of light is a frequency. It is a living language. It's alive. It holds consciousness. It is a frequency. And the highest way that we can um, perceive the language of light would be through sound and color merged together at the same time. So if we see sound and light simultaneously, that's the closest we can get to frequency. And the closest way that we can perceive this is through geometry, sound and light, as sound and light creating a, um, a match to sound and light into a geometric structure. Uh, structure a geometric shape which is the beginning building block to creation of all things so that's the language of light and we can perceive this if we don't perceive it as light and uh, you know color and sound simultaneously as frequency through geometry we can perceive it as as having form so a fifth dimensional um view of the language of light would be perhaps a field with a stream, with butterflies, and with unicorns in the distance. This would be the same thing as the geometric structures. It's just that they've been translated into form for you to be able to recognize that form in a fifth dimensional structure. If you're seeing geometry, then it's a sixth dimensional structure. If you're seeing light um, and sound merged together as one and hearing the sound and seeing the light, then you're in a seventh dimensional field. So, um, but it doesn't matter which field you're in because the point is that you're being activated. Through these presentations of the language of light lie the keys, codes, and triggers to the memories of the royal houses of Sirius, Pleiades, and Lyra, and the knowing of all that it means to be royal. So the presentations of the language of light coming in through the story, the dream weaver's web, lie keys, codes, and triggers, that which will activate you to the memories of the royal houses, where well, we know the royal houses is this royal code within the DNA, the memories of the inception point and the energetic structure of that inception point, Sirius, Pleiades, and Lyra at a celestial level or whichever inception point you are being drawn to, and the knowing of all that it means to be royal. If you are activated, you affect others with your vibration that is what it means to be royal 
the royal is that which spreads the royal is that which expands and the royal is that which serves royal is also synonymous with the color the way we perceive the frequency of the human matrix the, the the matrix system around the human it is a royal color like a kind of a royal blue purpley royal bluey purpley color it's quite a unique color like a cross between royal blue and deep purple together it's it's the 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 color of the structure of the matrix it doesn't matter if you don't see it in that color it's that color simply because that color creates a high level of frequency to the awakening of the of the matrix because it's synonymous with the word royal so we're dealing with a language and that language has, has uh, filtered in to all our languages on this planet i only speak english but if we were to look at french and german and spanish you would see those metaphoric codes within those languages as well so all that it means to be royal you are in service to the whole you are in service to the structure, not in service as in you are in service as they are above you and you are a servant. That's not the service that you are in. You are in service to the all and you are part of that all. A lot of people get confused with service to others. They think it means that you must be in service to others and not to yourself. And service to self means not to self. Therefore, you serve and serve and serve and serve until you're totally worn out and you can serve no more and you still keep on serving. That is not what service to others means. Service to others means service to the structure of others being at one with you. Therefore, you are in service to self and others simultaneously. Service to self means being in service to the structure that is self, ignoring other it doesn't matter if other doesn't exist as long as self exists. So if others all cease to exist, as long as self exists, then that's all that matters for there is only self. It's a true perspective, but when you carry it through to the third dimension, um, it becomes a complete distortion of all that is positive and all that is good. It becomes negative but it's a polarity to the positive. So it provides contrast. So you have these two different um, structures. The starseed vibration and the starseed communities are within a service to others field. That is the field that we are polarizing into and that, what it mean, that is what it means to be royal. There can be a royal structure within the service to self line. That's a whole other story. But the service to others royal line is an activation. It is an ability to connect with all dimensions. It's, in a, it's an ability to hold memory of the royal houses, knowing that we are part of the royal house in service to the structure, in service to all and to self. Um, you, the kings, queens, princes, and princesses of the royal houses. So this is a trigger. This is an activation through the language of light. You, the kings, queens, princes, and princesses. You will see royal. You will see royalty. It's not the royalty we have here on this planet, as in you're born into you know, a bloodline, so you are royal and you are the king or the queen. That's the, that is the metaphor, that is the language of light metaphor. The true king and queen is the divine feminine and the sacred masculine energy as they merge together. The princes and princesses are the, the student of the masculine, the, the apprentice. The princesses are the, the, the female student, the female apprentice, the daughter and the son energy to the the father and the mother energy to complete that family energy you the kings queens princes and princesses of the royal houses you know who you are this in itself is a trigger so when the nine say you know who you are this will resonate through you as this is being spoken so if you go back and listen to the video if you are open and are receptive to the receiving of higher dimensional energy, when the nine say you who know who you are, you will feel this resonance within and you will feel this is me. The nine is speaking to me 
and you will know that it's you because it is you. We speak to you now, children of the stars. So these are, you know, those who had their inception points within these celestial planetary systems. This is you, the children of the stars, those who are ready to walk through the celestial stargate. So we're looking at a portal. We are looking at a gateway within that celestial level. So when the chakra system is expanded up to that celestial level, this forms a stargate, it forms a portal. This is synonymous with the brain. So the brain patterns form um, a, a higher pattern, if you like. Uh, more of the brain is being used. More synapses are firing. The DNA is, is activating and coming online and the DNA is um, becoming, um, b becoming in, in a state of movement whereby the higher dimensions are experienced. So we really are going through a stargate. Those who are ready to walk through the celestial stargate and humbly attain the royal status. So humbly, it's done within humility. Not humility as in humility because you are humbled, because you are such a, you know, a servant and a nobody. It's humility as in we accept our grand place and our special um wonderful aspect that we are with humility to the all for all are one and all are just as humble and all are just as special that kind of humility and attain the royal status you are so rightly afforded at this time the royal status being that activation that psychic aspect that knowledge of the royal line the royal bloodline you are so rightly afforded why are we so rightly afforded this? Well, the nine go on to say, for the royal status through the memory complex of all that you are gives you the codes for sovereignty. So you are rightly afforded this because you are looking at finding sovereignty, as in you are no longer slaves, you are not controlled, you are moving into freedom, you are moving into all that sovereignty uh, means sovereignty, becoming whole, becoming sovereign, answering to no one, not in an um, egotistical way, in a way that we are the absolute template for source. We are the divine connection, the divine, the divine blueprint for source. Why do we want the codes for sovereignty? Well, the nine go on to say, so you may activate these codes through the alchemical processes within and become sovereign. Why do we want to become sovereign? Becoming sovereign makes us in control of our destiny, not just in this incarnation, but in all incarnations as an individualized memory complex as an individualized soul we are making choices for the overall vehicle the overall matrix about where it may go and what it may do becoming this creator uh, energy this creator god this this logos this creator of galaxies um becoming a uh, a holographic mirror, if you like, a holographic replica of source itself. This is the aim of the soul, so that the soul may individualize, so that source itself may retain memory or, or hold knowledge of individualized structures that, that are itself. For this lifetime, it gives us freedom it allows us to make our own choices and create our own reality, backwards, forwards, create our past, create our future, and join together within this network to create a reality for the entire planet. And that's the reason why we came, because the individuals on this planet put out a call for assistance, if you like, 
assistance within this controlled structure and the star seeds have come in to change the controlled structure to create the timelines to move earth into a sovereign place and move humanity into a sovereign place so this affects us individually this affects us as a soul this affects source itself and this affects the planet and humanity standing as the organic human on earth so what is the organic human on earth that is the sovereign human organic human is the human that was created if you like within the garden of eden it is the the organic human that lives as the human was supposed to live in harmony with its blueprint in harmony and in alignment with the planetary structure and with the energies of the planet so no distortion um, distortion as in away from the organic human template there's always distortion away from source in that respect distortion means movement away from oneness but distortion I'm meaning distortion in um, a sense of moving away from wholeness from the actual human structure so when you stand as the organic human on earth you hold the the destined template you stand as a genius you have perfect health or you are moving towards that you are able to heal others you are able to connect with other dimensions other universes other beings you stand as a royal connected activated individual holding living dna structures that are recursive I'm not quite sure what that means, but that just came through. So if you want to go away and Google what is a recursive DNA structure, then that's the organic human and that is the sovereign human, an individual with recursive DNA structures within. Standing as the organic human on earth, holding the memories of the extraterrestrial royal houses that are your bloodline, your birthright, and your true family. So we know what the memories of the extraterrestrial royal houses are. We've analyzed that, that are your bloodline. And as I've said in previous videos, your actual bloodline in this reality will be connected to that royal line for star seeds will incarnate down their own bloodline. We've got some star seeds coming in with the inception point of being source. They come straight into a third dimensional reality and leave again. So that's a slightly different perspective. They won't have incarnated down a bloodline with many incarnations. Their individualized memory complex will hold memory of source and directly in and directly back out. So that's one perspective. But for those who hold the, the perspective of um, more than one incarnation, um, we can all choose which perspective we hold through our knowings and our memory. Our bloodline will be the same thing as our incarnations. So there will be many individuals who know that they've incarnated down their own bloodline. And there's one way to find out if you take that pillar of light that I was talking about in the last video where you have this, this light coming down through the crown chakra, through the chakras and up through the base chakra, back up through the chakras as a vertical pillar of light. This is your resonance. And you imagine that you are standing or sitting within that and you say to yourself, I have incarnated in this lifetime down my own genetic bloodline. If this resonates, if this pillar of light resonates and stands symmetrical, then, the, then that is what you have done. If it doesn't feel right, if the pillar of light dissipates or moves or there's like this feeling of being wrong or the word no, then that isn't what you have done. But you can find out anything by working with that vertical pillar of light, for that is your resonance. Your birthright, as in you incarnated for this and your true family, these are your true relatives, your true, um, this is the group that is the true family for you. These are your true mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and daughters and sons. This is the true family. The dream weaver's web, the story has always been there for you. We've had many stories throughout our lifetime and our incarnation within your childhood from your very first communications with your infancy so books you've read stories you've listened to been there since you were incarnated the stories of the fairies the fairy tales and the fables the stories of the knight who saves the maiden from the dragon the princess lost and alone who is found when the prince declares her, his love for her 
So these are stories that hold the activation keys and codes, fairy tales, fables. They've all been channeled, if you like, these fairy tales and these fables. They've all been there. We have been surrounded with the tools we have needed to keep us awake and aware and activated if we are receptive. All star seeds will have come in with this receptivity to be able to receive constant activation so that they are never fully shut down. If you are a star seed and you look back through your life, you will see that you never fully shut down. You always knew deep inside about the higher purpose, about the mission and about the true home. There are quests to follow, journeys to take and magical artifacts and talismans to find. The stories have always been there as the dream weaver's web. So we know that this is the storyteller, the dream weaver's web, the keys and the codes to bring you back online, to activate you, to trigger you into the matrix containing memory that is on a path to individualization and thus ascension of planets and worlds. So that's what this has done. These stories, these language of light presentations have kept you activated, triggered you, triggered you into the matrix containing memory to to allow you to not forget who you truly are on a cellular level, taking you on a path to individualization of your soul. And we've talked about what that is. And thus ascension of planets and worlds. And in this case, we're talking about planet Earth. But many of you, many of you starseeds, a huge amount of you starseeds, will have done this before. There are individuals known as, well, some people call them the wanderers, the watchers. The nine just call these, well, okay. <laughs> they, they call them time lords, actually. And I know that's very sort of Doctor Who, but that's what the nine call them. These individuals are starseeds that will go from planet to planet to world to world to assist with ascension. It's like their job. It's like their role. They're like, you know, time lords and they will hop around through time and they will hop around through space and they will assist with ascension through incarnation and incarnation and incarnation and there are a huge number of these individuals some call them wanderers some call them watchers the nine say time lords they are star seeds all of them but they're a branch of star seeds other star seeds um haven't done this they don't hop around they may have come in from one incarnation and and left and gone back to that incarnation like a direct source incarnation Um, they may be on a different journey but a similar journey but there are lots and lots of individuals here that are um, hopping around assisting with ascension that's why the nine are saying ascension of planets and worlds because it's not just earth that you are assisting with So that's the end of this video. That's been quite a long one. Um, Thank you very much for listening uh, to that. And um, I will be back with more analysis videos. And um, thank you for listening. Bye. What is the Matrix? Who are the Masters? I, Magenta Pixie, am so very pleased to present my first book, channeled from my guidance system that I refer to as the white-winged collective consciousness of nine. Discover the true story of our origins as an energy system, how we lost the original template for our destiny, and how we are now in the process of remembering those lost codes. Learn how humanity may reclaim the sovereignty which is rightfully ours, bringing us back into wholeness integration and full understanding of who we are, what we are, why we are here and what we are here to do. Spirituality, metaphysics and science merge as the sacred geometry known as the language of light is downloaded and decoded. The realization and activation of these ancient codes for a new dawn of man is an alchemical process available to us all. Now is the time that collectively we move forward into a fully conscious ascension and embrace the new archetype of Master of the Matrix.